on that called How Do I List Without a Place to Buy? And I did it with my personal trainer and his girlfriend. And it begins with sitting down with a potential seller and say, if you could sell, would you want to? Yes. And then you have, why would you want to sell? And then I, and they said, because this place is too small. It's got the two of us and the two dogs. It's driving us nuts. How much longer could you be comfortable? Not very long. We want to get out of here. So step number one is establish their motivation for selling. Without that, you got nothing. Step number two is you ask this question, which scenario is, is more comfortable or more difficult for you owning zero homes or two? And in this role play, they had to think in their first one, well, I don't know if we'd want to own zero, we'd be homeless. Well, not in the pejorative sense of the word, but yeah, you'd have no place to own. So you'd rather own two. And they go, yes, could you afford to? Could you handle the payments and the maintenance on all that? And they think it through, they go, oh, no, we couldn't do two homes. Plus they probably couldn't get approved for it. So now we're back to owning zero. And then you ask the question, if your car broke down today, <clears throat> And the new one coming in was on that boat that sunk out in the Azores uh, this month. What would you do? Would you walk? In fact, I asked them in the role play, I said, would you guys walk? And they go, oh, no, we wouldn't walk. What would you do? We'd rent a car. Yes. That's the answer to making the move is you rent something, rent a hotel, rent another house, go to your parents. So you come up, the whole idea is interim housing. So that's number two, two A. And then instead of dealing with the emotion of, oh, where would we live? Where would we go? I say, how much would it cost you to do a double move and do interim housing? You know, five grand out, five grand in, five grand storage, 12500 for food and hotel over six months. And it's going to cost you $25,000 to make the move. Let's quantify it. Yeah. And Harvey McKay said, if you, can afford your, if you can afford to buy your way out of a problem, you haven't got a problem. So if you put it in money, say, okay, write a check and you make the move. So now how much more did you sell your home for now that since you didn't have to be uh, pressured to sell? Well, we made another 20, 30, 40 grand in the house. Now the one you buy, obviously you're going to pay premium for that too. But still, when you go to buy, now you're a cash buyer. You're going to be the one more likely to be considered. So maybe it's a break-even deal, but you got what you wanted. You got a, out of this rat hole that you live in. <laughs> I wouldn't use that term, <laughs> but you got to You go from the rat hole to the dream home at kind of a break-even deal. And the worst case scenario is, you know, you live in a hotel for five or six months. And, you know, I think about that and I got to be very careful when I use this analogy because the contrast could come across wrong. But you think about, you know, the pain of living in a hotel. I'm thinking about my programmer, Stanislav Ladonyenko, who lives in the Ukraine. And I think I talked about him to you. He's the one who created our website and still work. He and his family have packed up and left their home. Their parents are in his place in Kharkiv. I, sorry, I can't pronounce it. It just got bombed. So, you know, when you think about what the Ukrainians are going through, uh, making a double move, you know, come on, shut up. Just just get on with it. And